All right. Here we are. I'm live and we'll begin now. This is Silent Flute Live Lecture. I'm doing live on two videos, so you see me look at two different places. That is why. We're live on the Facebook private group, and then we're live on YouTube down here. So I'll give just the first little bit on YouTube as just a little sample. I'm just in off the road from teaching in Dallas, and now I'm in Houston preparing for the Sex Sutras book release, uh, which is very exciting. That comes out on Thursday. And and then soon after that, I'll fly back out to L.A. for the next project that I'll be writing and recording. And after that, in Florida. So, very exciting time. A lot of you know how I teach. And some of you are seeing transformations happening. And some of you will begin to see a lot of the techniques that I've talked about, especially in linguistics and uh, language, phonetics, uh, the anatomy, mind, brain. You start to see it again as it comes back around re-evaluate it from how you have progressed through life. It has a new context. You have new experiences to hear the same things again, but in different ways, in different tones. And this is an example. For example, right now as I'm talking to you, I was pacing my reality at the very beginning of this talk. I was saying, what just happened in my life? What's um, happening right now. So I just got in off the road. I was eating a little bit of this food. And after I set up all of this equipment, I'm doing YouTube live now, Facebook live. And this is what I did in the beginning of the lecture. Okay. So this brings attention to present moment when the subject of tonight's lecture is linguistics and linguistics is a big subject that includes phonetics. It includes, uh, the organs of linguist of language. It includes the uh, what do you call it? Neuroscience of how the brain develops. It includes neurolinguistics, like how the nervous system processes language. It includes syntax and grammar, and in my specialty, breathing and posture. And then in the IMC method of persuasion and influence. So I see all of these as linguistics, and it has a feedback mechanism on your system and on your. Uh, Attention. Where are you putting your attention is going to be your linguistics. So if you're in the uh, Facebook group right now, you're watching live, go ahead and comment a couple of ideas. You can, if you're on YouTube too, I'll answer if you know the first comment, just one comment uh, the live. You can always comment afterwards. But about linguistics, like what is your um, specific goal or idea of when you suggested linguistics, all of you online right now, I actually said, yeah, linguistics is what you wanted in the poll tonight. And so what do, what do you have in your mind as far as that goes? Because me, I break words apart into roots. I feel uh, what is the feeling of the word? Not in, and not in a, um, okay, here, here's an example. Here's an example of a linguistic technique. This is how to erase a um, sentence. And some of you maybe have heard it before that when you hear a tape recorder sentence in your mind, something that comes up, and I'll give you a clear example here in a moment. Uh, when you a tape recorder sentence come up in the, comes up in the mind, uh, I'll just give you the exact example because my dog is right here. There's my dog. And years ago, I caught myself telling, yelling at my dog, cut it out. And I caught myself on that day like four or five times saying, cut it out. So I asked, it bothered me. And I noticed it was like a reflex almost. It, I wasn't in control. And that's what bothered me about the sentence. I also heard elements of like my father in it. So I was like, wow. It was becoming clear to me that my mind was largely a mirror of what my parents had said and done to and with me and for me uh, growing up. So I asked my teacher, Arash, in one of his lectures... Uh, what do you do with a tape recorder sentence that you don't maybe have control over? And he gave me this technique. And he said, you write the opposite. And you write them both either down or in your mind. And you hold them both in your mind until they neutralize each other. And you'll... He didn't go into any more than that. And so I did it. And it felt am amazing when they neutralized. And so it's a technique that I continue to use. And... Uh, tell people about. Now, I'll give you the exact statement it was. The statement was, cut it out. That's what I was saying to my dog. So I was trying to figure out opposites. 
because uh, Arash had given an example in his lecture, and it was just, you know, like, for example, cut it out would just become cut it in. It was just like opposite of one word, or uh, cut it out, paste it out, you know. And so I was getting over like OCD, just trying to find the reverse of every word. Cut it out. I was like, paste it in, and then I was like, but I, what's the opposite of it? And and I I was going crazy with it and. Uh, so I changed the words totally. What I did was I changed the meaning. It's not changing the words. It's cha- flipped the meaning. The meaning was, hey, stop doing that. And so the opposite meaning that I was actually going for to neutralize that tape recorder sentence was keep doing that. Keep doing that. Hey, keep doing that. So I'm yelling at my dog. This is years ago. A few times, uh, five, six times that day, it bothered me. What it was, What I was saying was cut it out. She was like, you know, chewing on her foot or something like dogs do. And so in my mind, I thought, keep doing that. Keep doing that. So I held both of those sentences in my mind and the neutralization happened. You feel it. You feel like a tension that goes, almost like it when you have an upset tummy and then like you let out a very, not a loud belch. It's just like a, almost like the air gets let out of you. Like, like it's not a burp, but it's, it could be a burp. It's just the. The skin didn't come together like a burp. And there's a relief of pressure. Or even if you, a flatulence or something, there's a release of pressure. That's kind of what it feels like when you neutralize the words. So this is my understanding of a higher level of linguistics, like an implementation of linguistics to create effect, uh, positive change, to affect positive change in your system. Because once that pressure is gone, your posture is easier, your breathing's easier, your mind's easier. I save so much time now in my life because I don't have a fucking tape recorder sentence, cut it out. You know, it only takes one second to say, but I say it five times a day, you know, four days a week. That's like 80 seconds, you know, 50 weeks a year. That's like an hour. So it's like an hour of my year that I use saying, cut it out. Or whatever. I maybe exaggerated that math, but you get it. I save actual time that in the end of my life will accumulate. By new, so it's useful to get rid of tape recorder sentences. Those are fucking not present moment. And okay, so there's a couple comments. Uh, let's see. I don't see any comments on YouTube. So guys, if you wanna here, I'll, I'll answer maybe one of the Facebook comments. Empowering words into okay, you're interested in empowering words and syntax. Uh, what is it about syntax, Angelica, that uh, like syntax for what end? Like the words I get, you're looking for words that are empowering, okay? So then what kind of syntax? Like empowering syntax or what? Uh, Soza, effective communication and flow. Effective, cool. Effective for what end? What end are you, what what effect are you trying to create? And, but I can definitely go into empowering words and um, and I can talk about like what's effective for me, but... Yes, the order of words is what syntax is. That's what it means, uh, Angelica. So um, you just want to know in general, like about syntax or anything in particular about it. And Soza effective. Yeah, so I can talk about my communication and flow. If, is that what you mean, Soza? Or I'll start off with empowering words. Uh, empowering words. You know, you know, this is where, you, especially with Hatha Yoga, this is why Hatha Yoga and linguistics, I'm like, Mm, this is a connection that must be made more like everybody thinks they know like yeah power you know empowering words but they talk to themselves like trash they talk to themselves in a tonality that's not empowering it's disempowering it's yeah how are you doing today oh man it was great it was a great day you know uh i'm fine i'm fine it's like fuck that's not the tone of somebody that's fine like i'm fine man it was a great day like that's the tone so that's empowering words. Remember, it, the how you say it is way more important. And then with the Hatha Yoga, you become very sensitive in your nervous system, Angelica, about um, you know what words feel empowering. So some suggestions are look up synonyms. And so I'll just kind of throw out some words because I know you. I'll throw out some words that I think might be empowering to you. You grab a hold of some of those words and go to the thesaurus.com. Uh, look up the etymology of those. Find the the words that are used to define that word, and that will lead you down a rabbit hole of whoa. And once you turn your mind, tune your mind to the words that are empowering to you, which I'm about to throw at you, then uh, you'll start seeing more of those kinds of words. Okay, so some empowering words. 
Like, I'm just going to put myself in a feminine. I'm, I'm going to become, like, a female as best as, uh, you know, I can you, like a, a Dominican female mom, uh, you know, nurse. Goddess. Queen. Mm. Pure. Fiery. Mm. Sexual. Lovely. Mm. Constant. Fearless. Purity. Soft. Seductive. Cheerful. Clever. Funny. Lighthearted. Productive. Growth oriented. Expanding. Love, discernment. You get it. So I'm just throwing out words that would be, uh, you know, that I was just putting my, but it's it's a little polluted but because it's me. You know, I didn't fully dissolve myself and like teleport over there and possess your body, become you, and then start saying some words. You know, so I'm doing my best over here. So some of those that maybe you grabbed onto, you know, and don't let uh, anybody judge you on that shit. Like if you want to be called princess, be called princess. If you want to, you know, be called um, whatever makes you you feel that yeah i want to use that word and or or look at those words that like you want to use it and then you almost like metaphorically look over your shoulder to make sure it's okay that nobody's going to get on you for using that word to define yourself like god i am god and somebody would be like whoa dude you're so self right it's like who do you want me to worship outside of myself exactly um you know if i'm not god who do you want me outside of me that's not me to you know so uh that that's got to juice you and then, you know, be aware of who you're around because it, it uh, might not empower them. They might get agitated at it and, you know, that's not a problem. But if you, you're going to have to handle that so in a social situation. So that's where I'd go with that. In the beginning with my cold shower practice, Angelica, I would just recite power words to myself as I was the cold water was hitting me. Um, okay, so that's it for free YouTube. If you want the rest of this lecture, the other lectures, uh, the archive and the daily videos that I give, like the flow video this morning, tomorrow morning, and so on, then go to ninthlimb.com, sign up, and I'll get the notification that you subscribed, and I'll get you the archive ASAP. So I hope you enjoyed this. Namaste.